the first time, I became truly captivated by the world of environmental issues was when I saw a picture of a dead whale washed up on shore with 88 pounds of plastic inside of it in my eighth grade science class. This hit me hard as I thought about my family, my pets, and all of the other animals I share my life with. What if they had to endure this fate? But it also sparked a fire inside me. I thought, besides my inherent love for animals and this planet, why was this the most influential thing I'd learned to that point? All provoked by one image. Then it struck me, in this one image, this one whale, I saw something that was so much bigger than any of us. From that moment on, I knew this would be my life's mission. While this education starts at home, teaching children to be respectful of all living things, environmental science education should be a mandatory class in schools because we all call this planet home. Having the privilege to take an environmental science course truly changed my life in more ways than one. I was very surprised when I found this was not a core class in most schools, and many schools didn't even offer this course. When I went to take the test for this class in high school, only one other student walked into the room with me. One student. I was about to get up and leave thinking I was in the wrong place. But then I remembered the largest hurdle any environmental advocate needs to overcome to achieve this goal. To tackle the, th the lack of societal awareness. It boils down to these three factors. The educational system, the manufacturing industry, and the media. All three are very hard to influence. The first factor, driving the lack of societal awareness, the educational system. This system prioritizes learning about what's outside of our planet in physical science astronomy before ensuring that young generations are prepared for one of the largest challenges they will need to overcome, environmental challenges. Picking up the pieces of, of a broken environment under their fingertips, attempting to fit them all back together. Pieces, which all in society are helping to break, whether by trashing a plastic bag, buying meat from factory farms, or using synthetic fertilizers. Our planet is a closed system, and anything that we output, no matter how contained, comes back to us. Teaching children environmental education offers us our greatest possibilities, that they will become environmentally responsible and lead the way for others to take responsibility. It starts with all of our children. But what should these students learn? Besides the foundational processes that keep this planet running, they would also grow to see this planet in a different light, to see its magical complexity. Taught about our world's scientific beauty, instilling a passion for safeguarding it, a passion for teaching you the things we don't see. The second factor, driving the lack of societal awareness, industry. They leverage you into this out of sight, out of mind thinking, marketing their products to be deliberately vague or misleading. As consumers, we need to know about the 100,000 marine animals that die from plastic pollution and of the 5 trillion single use plastic bags used yearly, with most not recycled, as per the United Nations. Greenpeace and National Geographic report that less than 5% of plastic in the United States is recycled due to economic inefficiency. And it can only withstand recycling two to three times, making all plastic destined for landfills. We also need to understand that each of those five trillion plastic bags can look like jellyfish in the ocean, perceived as food for the sea turtles. Preventing this reality is as simple as sparing a few seconds to ask for paper bags at the store, donating to local organizations that combat animal harm and pollution, and by spreading the word. These students need to learn how important it is 
to stop the flow of plastic at the source by not buying it. They need to know that according to Brunel University London and the National Institutes of Health, there are over 150 chemicals and 240,000 microplastics and nanoplastics in one liter of plastic bottled water, which is at the forefront of medical news. That each person eats one credit card worth of plastic every single week, or a large solid tissue box of plastic in just over a decade. But let's dig deeper to examine a large contributor of these microplastics. According to the FDA, if you chew conventional gum, it is a flavored wad of plastic, rubber, and sheep's wool oil, also known as lanolin. This substance is comparable to sebum, which is found in pimples. Unfortunately, all of these ingredients are hidden under the name gum base. So unless you do some digging, you won't find much. Instead, look for more natural ingredients, such as chicle or tree resin, that won't pollute your body. Another little known household bodily pollutant comes from an item that we are supposed to use daily, though it never works out that way. Dental floss. While it may seem harmless, have you ever wondered what causes conventional floss to slide so effortlessly between your teeth? Besides being plastic, a problem in itself, some brands are coated in Teflon, or PFAs, to give that smooth feel, according to the Journal of Exposure Science and Environmental Epidemiology. In high enough amounts, this can be detrimental to your health. Next time, look for products such as floss, kitchen items, and even clothing containing bamboo or charcoal that are more sustainable for yourself and Mother Nature. Unfortunately, these issues are far from being confined to just one country. According to the Plastic Pollution Coalition, the U.S. alone exports over 1 million metric tons of waste yearly, with 78% of those exports going to countries with poor waste management. Learning to keep our environment thriving is how we raise a healthier generation mentally and physically, to make smarter choices. Plastic products were only largely introduced into everyday society about 50 years ago. Yet plastic can take over 500 years to break down. So let's do the math. This means that we are already reeling from the effects of something, only one-tenth finished with its life even though plastic polymers virtually exist in our environment forever. Why don't we know this? This is exactly why we need environmental education to make society more conscious of their everyday actions. This is where we reach our third and final factor, media. The influence of media is greatly felt around the world, including in classrooms. If environmental science were a required class, the media could be more compelled to report on global environmental matters, increasing awareness, and providing information on issues that need to be addressed. Sure, the stories of people halfway across the world are told in articles here and there, but this needs to be mainstreamed into the minds of not only students, but their families, neighbors, and friends. The opportunity media presents to create empathy leads to world solutions. There are many things you can do to increase this environmental movement within your community. From talking to your children, investing in more eco-friendly products, to getting familiarized with your town's agenda and finding community sessions to speak your mind, these are just a fraction of the ways that you can commit to your community and the planet. Other ways that you can help better our natural world include organizing litter cleanup sessions, buying local organic foods, and planting trees. Only together can we teach and inspire our younger generations to be stewards of this planet and get environmental science in classrooms. 
Imagine a world where everyone had access to clean water, where we can breathe clean air, where we can feed our loved ones pure whole fruits and vegetables. This world is attainable, and it starts with education. The more we all advocate for increased environmental societal awareness, the closer to that world we will be. It starts with you. It starts with me. It starts with us.